songs. I'd love to play music all the time. Matter of fact, I play it pretty regular. I play music all night long while I sleep. Behold, thy king cometh. Reading Matthew 21 and 5. Tell your daughter, tell ye the daughter of Zion, Behold, thy king cometh unto thee. I'm going to stop right there in that part of the verse because I want to talk about him coming unto us. And the third section that I want to preach this morning, Behold, I come quickly. I think you'll probably remember me preaching a couple of weeks ago about this. Behold, I come quickly. Matter of fact, I think it was last week. I just want to remind us of this because it's so important. He's coming again. Now, he came that first time to go into Jerusalem and let the church know he was there on business. And he died and paid the price for our salvation. And then he rose again. Then he went away again, and he ascended up into heaven. Revelation 3, 22 and 12, I mean Revelation 22, 12. Sorry about that. And behold, I come quickly, and my reward is with me, to give every man according to his work shall be. I am Alpha and Omega, the beginning and the end, the first and the last. Blessed are they that do His commandments, that they may have a right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. And I saw in Revelation 10 and 1, And I saw another mighty angel come down from heaven, clothed with a cloud, with a rainbow upon his head. And his face was as it were the sun, and his feet as pillars of fire. And he had in his hand a little book open, and he set his right foot upon the sea, and his left foot upon the earth, and cried with a loud voice, as when a lion roareth. When he had cried, seven thunders uttered, uttered their voices. Revelation 11:15. And the seventh angel sounded, and there were great voices in heaven saying, The kingdoms of this world are become the kingdoms of our Lord and of his Christ, and he shall reign forever and ever. And the four and twenty elders, which sat before God on their seats, fell upon their faces and worshipped God, saying, We give thanks, O Lord, God Almighty, which art and blessed and art to come, because thou hast taken to thee thy great power, and hast reigned. And the nations were angry, and thy wrath has come. In the time of the dead, that they should be judged, and that thou shouldest give reward unto thy servants the prophets, and to the saints, and them that fear thy name, small and great, and shouldest destroy them which destroy the earth. Behold, I come quickly. I want you to remember that I had to preach on this message in Madison. And God had told me that morning, said, you're preaching tonight, and here's the message I want you to preach. Behold, I come quickly. And my reward is with me. And I had never heard of preaching on a sermon on this. Never heard anybody preach about it. But God told me I was preaching it that night. And I studied. And I come up with some scriptures. And backed up everything I was saying in the Word of God. Had no place planned on calling me to preach. 
About six o'clock that evening, I had my computer on my lap. I was at my brother's house because he always took me to church on Wednesday nights in Madison. This was in 2006. And I told him, I said, God told me I was preaching tonight. And he said, where? I said, I don't know. That's what he told me. About six o'clock that night, the pastor called him and said, got to ask you to preach for me tonight because I've got to go to the hospital. Somebody's over there with emergency. And he turned around to me and said, are you ready? I said, yeah, told you I was ready. And I preached this message. Behold, I come quickly and my reward is with me. And God is trying to tell us again today, behold, I come quickly. And if you'll remember reading in Revelation about the 11th chapter, right before it's the seventh trumpet sounded, it says the sixth trumpet sounded and the seven comes quickly. Comes quickly. And as I read in your voices, in your ears today, he said he'd come to give reward to the saints and the prophets. But the statement before that says, and the nations were angry. Seemed like they're always getting mad when the Lord's trying to work. Every time he's trying to do something good for people who want to love him, the world gets angry, don't they? They got angry when he came. They wanted to kill all them little babies over in Bethlehem because... The king didn't get a chance to kill the baby Christ. When he came and when he would entered into the city and they were complaining because he was riding on that donkey and the people were praising him. They wanted him to shut him up. Here he was healing lame folks and blind folks. They couldn't shout a bit. They had no victory in them. Why? Because they were losing their clutch on people. And guess what? This world is going to lose their clutch again on us. And we're going to sail on out of here. He said, We which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with those that are dead and resurrected. And so shall we ever be with the Lord. Wherefore comfort one another with these words. Why am I trying to preach this today? I'm trying to give you some comfort that it's worth it all to be his child. To serve him through the last long mile. He said, I am Alpha and Omega. The beginning and the end. The first and the last. He had the first word and he has the last word. He's going to take his people out of here He's going to separate the sheep from the goats. He's going to separate us out, those that really love Him and serve Him. And we're going to be on His right hand and the others are going to be on the left. And on the right hand, He's going to say, Enter into the joys of the Lord. And on the left, He's going to say, Depart from me, you workers of iniquity. I never knew you. This world wants to be wicked. I don't want to be wicked. This world wants to turn away from God. I don't want to turn away from God. This world wants to make more laws and more restrictions on the church and how, what it means to serve God. And I'm going to tell you something. God set me free. I can serve Him. I can worship Him today and live my life in the beauty of holiness. Live for Him with all my heart, soul, mind, and strength. And nobody can dictate to me nothing different. Okay, baby. They can't turn me away from serving God. I love Him today. And I want you to love Him. Uh -huh. And draw close to Him this Easter season. Let this Word minister to your life. Make some changes in your life if you feel like you need to. Do what you need to do to serve God. Because it's not only worth it when you go up there. It's worth it down here. You'll feel the freedom of the Spirit. 
to live for God and He'll help you to try to get along. You know, we sometimes lose our grip on reality. We don't realize how real Jesus is. But He's more real than anything in this world. This world always shows you illusions. If you're watching TV, you're showing, He's showing you pictures of things. Pictures that they develop. You don't know if any of them's accurate or not. But let me tell you something. When you get a hold of God and He shows you Jesus and Him in your life, you'll know how real that is. That's more real than anything. And He said, in this world, you shall have tribulations, but be of good cheer. I have overcome the world. I want you to really rejoice this year in the Lord. Rejoice and long to see Him. Serve Him with all your heart. Let's pray. Father, we thank You for this day. I thank You for Your Word. Thank You for the opportunity You give me to share this Word here and to love these people. And I do love them. Oh God, You give me a heart to serve You and a heart to preach Your Word. Help me to love You. Love the Word. Preach it. And love the people. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. God bless you. We have a kind of an unwritten rule. I'm supposed to try to stick somewhere around 30 minutes. I get too excited for that sometimes, and I'm sorry. I'm not really sorry. I'm just sorry I run out of breath and run out of time. That's more what it is.